So for our next speakers, I'm uh, very happy to welcome Caroline Mürk and uh, Sung. Uh, they will um, both uh, present to us uh, what they uh, experienced and how they uh, hacked and tackled the Korean uh, demilitarized zone, so the zone between North and South Korea. Um, Caroline is uh, a Franco-Korean anthropologist and an artist who graduated from uh, Chelsea College of Arts in London and uh, EHES in Paris. And Sung is a Korean artist who graduated from art school um, and SUBC uh, in 2006. So I'm very happy to welcome you and uh, we are now very eager to hear you talk. Thank you very much and thank you for joining us. My name is Caroline. Thank you. I'm speaking to you from Paris right now. And Sung is speaking to you from Seoul. So we are Hi, very guys. happy <laughs> to, give you, <laughs> to give you this talk about the DMZ. So our topic is about hacking the DMZ, but in artistic way. And for that, we want to give you an insight of the Korean culture right now. So that's why uh, Sung will uh, give you some information about what's happening in Korea. So I'm an anthropologist and I'm an artist. So meaning that I study people and the way they live and I try to understand why they think the way they think, why they act the way they act. As an artist, I try to express my vision through different artistic medium and through creativity. So I started to work on the DMZ in 2012. And in 2013, I had the chance to, to paint the Berlin Wall. And um, so I did that during the night. So that was very quick. And what I wanted to represent, it was the, uh, the fact that uh, Korea and Germany have a similar history, especially after World War II and during Cold War. So on the wall, I painted two faces. Those two faces are Korean masks. And those masks were used during popular theater. And uh, the popular Korean theater was a criticism of the ruling and governing class. So uh, on the next slide, you can see me painting the wall during the night and there were two kids like looking at it and they were saying, oh, the faces you're painting, it's anonymous. And I was like, no, it's not anonymous. Those are Korean masks. Then the next day in the morning, I went to see if my graffiti was still on the wall and it was still on the wall. And I was very happy to see that people were taking pictures of it. So, well, this is, uh, this was my vision of uh, DMZ at the time, like uh, almost a decade ago. So, Sun, can you tell us um, about you and about your work as an artist? Okay, thank you. Uh, hi guys, uh, I'm Sung. I'm a visual artist and uh, I'm living mostly in Seoul. And uh, in my artwork, I've been uh, concentrating on collecting data. And uh, for example, um, as you can see here, um, I've, uh, uh, I've grown up a, a plant and I collected uh, database data uh, through sensors and the data goes into computer uh, to make uh, uh, in uh, 3D shaped uh, uh, sculpture and I print them out and uh, um, uh, stick them together and made this uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, sculpture uh, in, digital, in digital way. So uh, basically uh, that's what I'm doing and uh, in my uh, work, I've been uh, applicating uh, many uh, kind of uh, different kind of uh, uh, techniques, uh, such as a robotic movement. You can uh, hear, you can see here the the, the body movement of the audience can control the uh, robotic sculpture, for example, or uh, and uh, some uh, performance performer use um, the robotic 
uh, sculpture as a as a, some uh, a tool, and also some interactive animation mapping technique uh, that I'm using, and the audience can uh, enjoy uh, the, uh, the the animation of the uh, uh, of uh, uh, by the uh, the motion of the audience. So and so like this. And also, uh, I've been uh, uh, ex uh, experimenting uh, some uh, interesting animation, and uh, you can we can uh, enjoy that with uh, some Google, so in so in VR uh, mode. And also, uh, I've been uh, practicing some live performance uh, with uh, inter interactive audiovisual, so which means. Uh, there's some performer making uh, some sound and sound uh, effects, sound, uh, sound control, or uh, make changes of the uh, animation on the wall. So um, my project, uh, my uh, called with a title Prometheus string, uh, the, the, the image you can you see is uh, the recent version. And you can find more details on my uh, uh, website or you can ask some questions through my uh, email, or even uh, uh, through this uh, link, you can uh, check uh, documentation video. Thank you. Caroline? Thank you, Sang. So about hacking the DMZ, yeah. So about hacking the DMZ, for people who work in information security or cybersecurity, you might know the sub network to protect your internal network. However, I'm not going into technical details about that, but I will explain what inspired this sub network. So, what inspired this sub network was the border between the two Koreas. So, the um, DMZ, the Demilitarized Zone, was built in 1953 after the Korean War. As you can see on the map, it's a border and it's, the length is 250 kilometers and it's four kilometers wide. Um, in, at the border, there is this place called Pan Mujon and it's a joint security area where all the official negotiations take place. The official negotiation between North Korea, South Korea, the United States, and the United Nations. So uh, when you visit the place, you can see many flags. So at the north of the border, you can see the North Korean flags. And at the south of the border, you can see the South Korean, the United Nations, and the American flag. So it's a very international place. And because it was built after an international conflict. So about the DMZ history, this was a battlefield. So this was a battlefield between the communists in the North and the, the capitalists in the South. And from the archive, from the audiovisual archive I found, I decided to make some paintings just to express my feelings about this, uh, this atrocious place, you know? So um, I used Chinese ink and I just drew what I felt about what I saw and what I experienced when I visited the place in 2012. So, it's a, it's a sad place. I mean, it was a sad place, but um, now it just became something different. And uh, what is the DMZ now? So can you show us the, um, the slide? So the DMZ is more like Disneyland. Yes. And it's, the, it's what I call the military turn into Disneyland. So you can take pictures with soldiers, like South Korean soldiers, and you can buy some North Korean wine if you want. If you want to visit that place, you need a guide. And all the guides tell the same thing. If you visit it, if you visit the place from 
South Korea, so you will hear a lot of propaganda against North Korea. If you visit the place from North Korea, you will hear a lot of propaganda against South Korea. And so um, it's a bit overwhelming, you know, to visit this place because it comes from like a very sad moment in Korean history. And now it turns into like a market where you can buy, you know, some uh, patch and, uh, <laughs> and you can buy many goodies about the TMZ. So, um, the other thing which is very interesting and which is known by the scientific community is that the DMZ is now has grown its own unique biodiversity between landmines. Because you have to know that this border uh, and four kilometers wide, you have many landmines. And it's, it's the no man's land. No one is crossing. So, um, vegetation, plants, and animals came to, you know, to make their own home in this uh, border. So you have eagles, you have deers, and I heard that you also have a Siberian tiger there. So uh, the scientific community come to observe the animals, come to observe the plants, and uh, what the uh, South Korean government want, they want to preserve this place. So they ask the UN, so the UNESCO, to uh, um, to label this place as, you know, like uh, world heritage, but it's still in negotiation right now. Um, what else? So, Sung, about the biodiversity, uh, has met an art, uh, has got this project of uh, an art installation. And both of us, we would like to make an art installation at the DMZ. So we're calling all the artists, all the tech people who are interested by this issue to join us. And maybe we will be able to make something beautiful there. Because what do we want? We want peace in Korea. Peace is not, I mean, there's the armistice, and but the peace agreement is not signed. And what we will talk in this presentation it's how, you know, it's supervised by the U.S. government. Uh, so, Sam, can you tell us more about the plant you collected at the DMZ and your project about it? Okay, uh, Caroline. Uh, so, um, before I talk about the uh, uh, project for DMZ, I, I'd like to uh, explain a little bit more about the uh, uh, basic idea of my project. So um, my project called uh, Prometheus String Project has this, uh, as you can see, this uh, uh, basic uh, process. So there's uh, some data collected from living creature and uh, there's uh, this uh, artistic concept of a data reflection, which means uh, for example, there's a sunlight and uh, when uh, the sunlight passes through the through a prism, it makes this beautiful uh, rainbow. And I've got this the idea that if I can um, uh, change, uh, uh, reflect, reflect the uh, the data as numbers into the uh, and uh, pass through this uh, uh, data reflection concept, and it it uh, becomes a totally different visual or even the sound or movement. So that was the basic idea of the project. And uh, this is, uh, you can uh, see a little bit more detail about the uh, Prometheus string uh, project. So there's a plan that was, uh, with the plan, that was our first version. And uh, there's uh, some sensors, connected sensor, analog sensor, or temperature, humidity, UV sound, some so about uh, the details about the, uh, the environment of the uh, uh, plants growing uh, process. And uh, it uh, makes, it decide the, sh uh, the sculptures, shape, size, or position, uh, some deta details, and also, the some the altitude or longitude of the uh, project space 
can uh, affect uh, affect the deformation of the uh, sculpture. And uh, you can see how it uh, becomes uh, in shape. And uh, these images are uh, the images from a uh, process. So um, on the left, you can see the serial numbers uh, coming into computer in real time. And those numbers decide the shape and in every 30 minutes. So I've got different shape every th uh, in every 30 minutes. And uh, on the right, on top, that's the image how the sensor or computer see the uh, plant. And the uh, last image is uh, for uh, preparation of uh, 3D printing. And uh, this project, project uh, Prometheus uh, String project, had uh, some evolution uh, because I, uh, I started this project uh, in 2016, so for four or, th or five now uh, uh, five years, uh, I, uh, it, uh, the project reached seventh version. And uh, during this uh, 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 evolution, I, uh, I've been applying uh, uh, various uh, techniques such as robotic movement, audiovisual performance, etc., And also, I've been uh, trying to uh, match with uh, some social issue on my world. Because uh, what I wanted through my work is not just some demonstration of, uh, of certain techniques or certain uh, scientific theory. I wanted my artwork uh, reflects uh, where I live or where I where we live. So uh, on third version, I've been uh, I've tried to make to match uh, this project with uh, some uh, social issue. So I was invited uh, in uh, uh, in a for an exhibition in Gwangju, and uh, Gwangju was is a very uh, important city for uh, its uh, uprising for democracy in 1980. So I tried uh, to uh, talk about the, uh, uh, so some subject of this uh, uh, movement and my work. And also uh, in 2018, I've got this uh, idea of talking uh, about uh, DMZ because um, that it was uh, just uh, right before the summit of uh, two Korea's president. So president from North Korea and South Korea. And uh, so uh, I decided to uh, make some pro uh, project uh, uh, concerning of this uh, event. So I, uh, I've got this, the idea that, uh, that of uh, collecting uh, the plant around uh, DMZ and uh, make uh, use it uh, for my uh, project. So uh, this image explain uh, a little bit more about uh, uh, how how I can finish my uh, uh, project. So you can see here a DMZ zone, and there's a Panmunjom that which Caroline uh, explained. So uh, the image is very small, but you can uh, still see the uh, two Korean. A president shaking hands that happened in uh, 2018. So um, I make some. Uh, I make my uh, work uh, in Seoul, and uh, it was 2018. I was making uh, my uh, uh, sculpture, and uh, it uh, reaches. Uh, it's uh, 58 kilometers from Panmunjom, but on the same direction to north. Uh, on the and on the same distance, there's some uh, train station in North Korea. So I've got the idea, this idea that uh, uh, I can finish the uh, my project by installing uh, my sculpture uh, around this uh, train station. But hopefully, but uh, DMZ zone or uh, getting get into DMZ zone or uh, in, into North Korea as a uh, South Korean still is uh, impossible. So hopefully 
I'm hoping uh, uh, that uh, that I can one day I can install my work in uh, North Korea. That uh, that was a brief ex explanation of my project. Caroline? So perhaps the best, yes, perhaps the best place uh, to uh, to make your installation would be the joint security area. That would be so yeah, hacking. Yeah, yeah, hopefully. Hacking <laughs> the security there. So you talk about the train station at the DMZ. There's a train station, a ghost train station that is not functioning anymore. Uh, so in 2002, George Bush, the President George Bush, came to visit that uh, train station. And he made a discourse, which is very famous, because he said that North Korea was the axis of evil. So he didn't plan, you know, for the reunification or the peace agreement at all. Uh, however, the train station is very strategic. So right now, like the North Korea and South Korea are talking about um, making a railway between the two countries. So uh, because what you have to know is South Korea is like an island, you know, it's totally isolated from um, the rest of Asia. And uh, you can only access South Korea by plane or by boat. So what would be like the impact of having a railway going from south to north Korea, Sang? Can you tell us about it? Yeah, so uh, you see the image and the picture, there's a, uh, the George Bush. And uh, on the uh, right side, uh, there's, uh, uh, that's uh, our former president. So um, it, was, um, it was 19 years ago. And uh, we were uh, trying to uh, connect or reconnect this uh, two railway. And now it's cut. But uh, after the after 19 years, so now we are in 2021, 21st. And what happened during that time? Uh, honestly, nothing, because of the uh, political reason. And uh, uh, so, uh, but. Uh, hopefully, uh, re in recent condition of politics in uh, uh, between two Korea, we are uh, re-beginning of uh, talking about this connection of two railway. But if it happens in real, uh, you can see on the right side, you can see the, the on the map uh, from the even from the Europe to the uh, extreme Asia. Uh, everything can be connected by train, by uh, on land, and uh, uh, even even we can transfer everything we want, and uh, it costs much cheaper and ecologically, it uh, it consumes very less uh, the fuel. So uh, it it is uh, is a really uh, good not. Not just uh, in political reason, but economical or ecological reason. This is uh, this is a big uh, event. This will be big event. Okay. And um, thank you. Can you show us the next picture? Yes. So imagine if if all the Asian railways were connected. That will be huge. You know. Um, so let's talk now about some stereotypes and why and how they are made, you know. I think stereotypes, Western stereotypes of uh, South Korea and North Korea uh, is because, you know, of the press, the Western press, and also we always hear uh, things from, you know, the US viewpoint. So, I guess there are some truth behind stereotypes, but today we are here to explain more what's behind those uh, internet memes, for example. So we know that uh, there are some hackers in North Korea, the cybersecurity community in the United States were attacked, uh, and uh, but we have also the K-pop, South Korean K-pop, and we are we have also the South Korean gamers. But behind, you know, those people, there are politics. And Sung is going to explain uh, what's behind it. So 
um, who you have to know that the United States of America have a huge power on Korea Peninsula. So on those pictures, we can see Trump and Kim Jong-un and the South Korean president. So can you tell us uh, about those pictures, Sung, please? So uh, that was, I remember that was uh, 2018. Just uh, right after, uh, after the uh, no, no, not right after, but uh, um, the after the uh, the uh, United team, team uh, during the uh, Winter Olympic Games uh, in Pyeongchang, uh, and uh, uh, there was uh, the summit uh, between two uh, between two Korea's leader, and they agreed. So be just between. North and South Korean prisons, they agreed for the uh, end of the war. Because, you know, in Korea, we are still in the war. But just, you know, we are, we are uh, getting some polls. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, so that's why, you know, around the frontier, there are so many, you know, military, uh, uh, military uh, unities. Units and uh, is, uh, and uh, this uh, impossibility to go and come. So uh, and uh, but in 2018, so uh, two countries uh, tried to end this war, uh, but unfortunately we have we uh, we need agreement of United States presidents. Uh, so uh, for this uh, uh, contract or the, to sign up, so uh, Trump, uh, so the former uh, president uh, of USA, uh, decided made some good mood for that to sign that. So, but just right before the meeting in uh, Singapore, uh, he changed mind. So they uh, they couldn't sign the on the paper. So we just, you know, signing on a paper, you know, that was uh, North Korea uh, uh, had, uh, had this uh, plan to open their door to the world. And then they uh, uh, remove all the, you know, uh, militaries around the uh, DMZ or frontier. But we couldn't do that because uh, of the uh, uh, United uh, States president uh, to a uh, change in mind. So that's what happened in uh, to the, uh, 2018. So, okay, so as you see, we need only one signature from the US president to have peace in Korea. So the question, will Biden sign the peace agreement? We don't know, but we would like it, you know. So you talk about uh, like the military power of North Korea. Can you tell us about uh, like this tradition before every election in South Korea that um, so the missiles, so North Korea send missiles before every election in South Korea. Can you tell us more something about it? Yeah, it becomes like almost a, you mentioned the tradition, but yeah, this is a, a silly thing. But you know, uh, for South Korea and 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 more for the uh, old generation, the communist or communist uh, government is uh, still main enemy. So they uh, like to use in politics. So just right before the uh, important. Uh, election like a presidential election or election uh, for a deputy, a, they call North Korean government to launch or to start some uh, ex uh, experimental uh, uh, launch of missiles. So uh, everyone, uh, the, most of the young people know about this details, but it still works <laughs> for all generations. And we are right now, even right now, we are just uh, uh, several days before the uh, election day. And it was, uh, I remember it was uh, last week or two weeks ago, there was a, a launch of <laughs> another uh, missile in North Korea. So it's like fireworks, you know, you are now yeah. used of it. 
<laughs> it's still working. It's uh, crazy. Okay, so about South Korea now, we all know Samsung and the Chebol power, but uh, I didn't know that South Korea was making an artificial sun. So that could be like uh, an answer for the climate change, maybe? Yeah, uh, I've, I've, I've known this, uh, this news uh, from the uh, newspaper and uh, I uh, read some article about that on that. So uh, Korean scientists uh, succeeded this uh, artificial sun uh, for uh, more than 20, around 20 seconds. So that was the first time in the world uh, that uh, an artificial uh, sun last that long. So that, that was a, that is a really good sign for um, for the new energy to make energy uh, because actual nuclear power uh, plant it makes a lot of you know uh, a lot of uh, uh, the, the waste and uh, is uh, contagious and is uh, very uh, dangerous because of, of this uh, possibility of explosion, but uh, in but in this uh, making sun way, so, so making the uh, the sun the artificial with this uh, technique, uh, it doesn't it doesn't produce uh, any uh, danger or waste uh, nuclear waste. So it can be really a uh, uh, good chance to have the clean energy. No, oh, so that's great. And, um, you know, uh, South Korea is very, uh, is very interested by, you know, preserving the biodiversity, as we could see at the DMZ, you know, the, um, the South Korean government asked the UNESCO to preserve this border as it is now with all these animals and all the plants. And um, uh, because it's Easter, uh, Easter weekend. So every April 5th in South Korea, there's a national event called Shing Mogil. So, and it's very, it's an ecological movement. So can you tell us uh, what is it exactly, Shing Mogil, Sang? It's just simply a planting day. So you plant uh, uh, everywhere. But uh, so I remember when I was a kid, uh, you know, you know um, the, in the school, uh, in the school, they, we went to the mountain and uh, uh, practicing this uh, planting uh, the, the trees. Uh, and, uh, and the Korean government is also um, uh, com uh, helping uh, in uh, Mongolia. Uh, because uh, you know, in Mongolia, there's uh, some uh, some the, the desert is uh, expanding, so uh, and it uh, it influence, influence it makes you know uh, the very huge dust wind, and it reaches to Korea until Korea. So a uh, Korean government uh, went to uh, Mongolia uh, to uh, plant uh, more trees. Okay. So Shingmong Gil, you know, uh, become a national day after the Korean War. Okay, because we uh, there were not enough uh, trees in the mountains, so they asked the population to participate in this um, national effort, and now we have a very nice forest and very yeah. nice bamboo forest. Plus of yeah, trees. that's true. But uh, oh, sorry. Because uh, you know that, that uh, when uh, the Korea uh, Korean people started this Shingmogil uh, uh, Day, they uh, you know when I see uh, when I uh, see the uh, all the really all the photography of the uh, 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 of the uh, landscape in Co in Korea, uh, for example, like uh, and uh, uh, around the end of the uh, Joseon Dynasty. The, you know, every mountain was, uh, you know, no tree, you know, it was like uh, just, you know, some hill, we can see. But now uh, in South, in Korea, is uh, everywhere is uh, covered by trees. And so uh, now we even talk a little bit uh, more, uh, less 
about this uh, even uh, this uh, uh, planting day because you know uh, now we uh, have enough trees i think okay and people love hiking you know so yeah. uh thank you you know for listening if you'd like to join our art movement to get a peace agreement <laughs> in Korea, we would love to hear from you. So you can either write to us, either write to me or write to Sung. So we are very pleased to give you some information about our country. And mm. uh, we'd like to hear your questions. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much uh, for your presentation. Um, Information for the uh, people on the stream. If you have any questions, uh, then you please write them into the questions pad. The link to the questions pad um, is on the talk side. Um, it's a bit hidden between your two bios, but it is there. I can see it from here. Uh, so click the link and put your questions uh, there. And uh, we can start uh, now with the first question that has been there for almost all of the talk. Maybe uh, you can answer that individually. Um, did you ever cross the border? Uh, no, no. I did my military service uh, for two years, and uh, I've been, uh, I did some training, a military training inside of DMZ. But you know, it's uh, highly, you know, prohibited and uh, it's secured by uh, a lot of, you know, uh, uh, military uh, troops. So it's, uh, it's really difficult. But, you know, you can, you can reach it to uh, some uh, touristic sites. I did not cross the border yet. So, but I hope one day I will. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but also, but, uh, you know, uh, the recently, the, it was uh, just uh, uh, last year, the North Korean leader, Kim Jong-un, mentioned that was the, for the first time by, an, uh, by, a Korean, uh, by a North Korean leader. He mentioned beloved South Korean. He used the love, which means mm. he has this will to, uh, to open. It's not, it's not, we are not talking about, we are not yet talking about the uh, reunification, but at least, you know, ending war. And uh, we just, you know, crossed the border. Uh, it needs just the signature signing by uh, uh, American presidents. Okay, let's see. So there is, the next question is a longer one. I hope that I... I get it all. So, um, how can we explain the discrepancy between Western media perspective that focuses on the DMZ and the Gangwa Peace Observatory where Koreans send wishes for unity of Korea? Uh, which perspective is more Korean, DMZ or Gangwa? No, uh, uh, can you, can you, <laughs> there was, there was uh, 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 several details. Can, can you repeat again, please? Yes. Um, how can we explain the discrepancy between the Western media perspective that focuses on the DMZ uh, and the Gangwa Peace Observatory, where Koreans send wishes for unity of Korea? Um, well, uh, about yeah, about the DMZ or uh, future about the uh, of the of DMZ uh, to. Two uh, government has uh, has had this uh, plan to preserve the DMZ as it is and uh, uh, try to develop the uh, the touristic site or uh, the research site research facilities, but uh, in minimum way. And uh, but and also from the uh, from uh, many country. Uh, the the researchers coming uh, coming to uh, DMZ side to uh, to uh, do some research already, but uh, it's not the DMZ is not uh, the so, uh, an issue um, 
I mean, a well-known issue is not not yet in a Western country, I think. Yes, I think the um, uh, the question <clears throat> ends a bit uh, about maybe also uh, where's the difference between how Koreans, I mean, you as a South Korean have a South Korean perspective and how uh, the Western media uh, looks at it. I mean, for, for myself, I, I basically know that the DMZ exists and I, mm -hmm. uh, through this talk, I learned a lot. Um, but uh, how is the, uh, the Korean uh, perspective maybe different? No, I think uh, we are just uh, focusing on the, uh, the, uh, the that uh, that land untouched during more than uh, sixty years. So, absolutely, we often say that absolutely we make nothing inside. <laughs> so that's the main idea, and uh, our the South Korean government is uh, keeping and uh, this idea uh, for the future. So, uh, so there will be, you know, so many researchers uh, of the uh, biology or some other uh, other scientists will rush to uh, GMZ in the future if we finish the finish the work. And the thing is, the DMZ, you know, is controlled by the UN and the US, you know, so mm. that's why we all get this Western perspective, because it's the Western uh, powers who, um, who govern this place, in a way. Yeah, the funny thing is, uh, you know, when uh, South Korean government or some uh, uh, some association, private association, try to uh, support uh, some I don't know some uh, some food or some uh, materials to North, for North Korean people. They they need they need permission from UN to cross the border, yeah. and uh, in many times UN denies because uh, because you know uh, in uh, United States policy they they uh, they uh, force to block. North Korea in total way, so it's even not possible to help them. Yeah, that's the that's the actual and condition. That, yeah, and there's uh, you know the question about crossing the DMZ. So there's this um, woman association which was funded funded by a um, Korean American woman, and they managed to cross the DMZ with other Korean American women, but they were American, so they had, you know, the authorization by the UN and by the US government, but inside South Korea or North Korea, it's very difficult, you know, to get um, the authorizations. So I think that explains how this is this place, the DMZ, is really an international hotspot, you know, regulated by external powers. So for the very last question, um, I, I guess you you heard that before, but uh, the uh, the asker is uh, saying uh, this sounds like propaganda. How do you feel about that? The propaganda from North Korea, you mean? Um, I uh, think it aims at South Korean propaganda. It doesn't say, but it sounds like it. So, ah, yeah, the, the, you mean the last uh, recent event, maybe? Um, it's the rest of the question. Yes, I guess um, uh, they are aiming at that. Because, you know, around the, uh, the uh, frontier, in, uh, uh, from both, both sides, we put this, you know, uh, huge speakers to, for the propaganda or some people, uh, some people uh, send the balloons with us, some, you know, uh, propaganda papers or uh, the, some cars uh, from, uh, from both sides. But uh, recently, uh, with the political good mood, we stopped it for a long time. But uh, in few years ago, 
in, in political way, and uh, we had a different situation with uh, with the former president. Uh, they uh, they restarted the, this uh, this uh, stupid actions. But uh, in South Korea, is uh, some people very uh, especially uh, the refugee from North Korea. They have uh, this uh, uh, association. And uh, they still continue to send something to North Korea, but you know it's a very uh, bad scene by the rest of the Koreans, South Korean. Okay. Yeah, it looks like a game, you know. Now, <laughs> so all those propaganda from North Korea and South Korea is it's becoming a game. You know, the mm. missile or the balloons or the speakers. You know, just um, yeah. Of course, there's propaganda from South Korea, of course. In, in, in a way, an art installation, if you want. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. Thank you very much. We've run out of time. Um, I guess people can contact you uh, still um, uh, via uh, email and from the, uh, from, from, the, from the slides. I think the contact is there. Yeah. Um, thank you very much for your talk and for the Q&A. And, um, yes, I wish everyone uh, a pleasant event. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank